moment exactly what your life would look like if you were a millionaire. The truth is you would have a lot of the same concerns, consistently working hard to grow as a person and develop fruitful, loving relationships all around you. Your greatest concern in life would still be your health and the health of those around you. There would be one main difference though, and it's an important one. You would no longer have to worry about money. You would have the freedom to do what you wanted, when you wanted. You would have control. Financial freedom is the freedom to be able to make choices. The choices about what you do with your most precious resource, your time, who you spend it with, and where and what you do with it. I want you to open yourself up as we begin to talk about what it takes to become rich trading. Traders are often very concerned with how much money they can make and how quickly they can make it. And each day in each trading session is approached as almost the improbable or impossible. The reason I want to share this formula with you is because it's very important to have the correct mindset, the mindset of an investor. And it's important to focus on this formula for the bigger picture. And this is going to help you to be able to execute, which is what you need to do in order to achieve your goals. You need to be able to execute. So let's take a look. Starting with a $3,000 balance. How do you get there? How do you achieve your goals? Where are you starting from? You're starting with just a $3,000 balance today. And you are committing to making for the next five years, regularly, yearly, another $3,000 deposit. What is that? Like $260 or so a month. Go ahead and and take a look and then and the rate of return you know holding bitcoin what do you think you could do what do you think you could achieve yearly i think the average rate of return annually is something closer to about 120 percent take a look at some of these numbers 2017 1300 2020 300 that's 2019 87 and 2018 72 these two cancel each other out you're looking over four years you know, 1,600 divided by four, you're looking at 400% a year. There you go. Mean annual return, 400% showing the percent change for every year into Bitcoin. You know, it's a couple of down years. 2022, right? You know, good chance it's a down year as well. You know, that's what I'm expecting. Not being invested, you know, whether that's worth it to you during these bear market years, it could have a significant change in your overall accumulation. That's for some more advanced stuff. So you can see even if we did experience something like drastically diminishing returns, you know, instead of 400% over the last four years, maybe we're looking something forward at like 200%. But even if we only get 70%, what happens if you use something realistic? What happens if you use something like a 30% return? Over the next five years in Bitcoin, you're looking at taking a total deposit over five years, $18,000 and growing your account to $46,000. That's only all over a five year period, but it's also with a 30% return. I think that I, well, I personally expect to achieve over a 70% return annually in Bitcoin over the next, what, 10 years? Absolutely. So let's take a look at that. Let's make that 10 years, 70%. I think underestimating greatly over there. We'll see, we don't know. I think it's safe. I think it's safe to work out my plan using 70% expected return in Bitcoin over the next 10 years. And then you're taking that $33,000, you're turning it into $2 million. Now $2 million is comfortable. You could basically buy whatever you want whenever you need it. You know, really very comfortable. But the thing is, when I first started doing this, I did this with 11 years. It was an 11 year plan with three having events. And if you really want to plan this out correctly, starting today, you could go ahead over the next 11 years, expect to have three more having events. Next one, you know, it's every 210,000 blocks. Next one, you know, estimate 20,024, 20,028, 20,032. But the thing is, is the bull market happens the year after the having. So you're gonna to wanna to make this a 12 year plan, 70% annual return. And now you're looking, you know, total deposits over those 12 years, $39,000, $3,000 a year. You're committing to this plan, to your plan your investment plan and then you're looking at you know five million dollars if we hit our ex expected 70 percent we don't i mean it's an, anything could happen understand your risk and what your risk is before you make any investment and do not invest any more than you could afford to lose but but make sure you make calculated risks 
Is this a calculated reform? Now, if there was a, just the 85% annual return in Bitcoin over the next 12 years, you would be looking at something, you know, $15 million. That's from here on up, you go on borderline ridiculous for a 12 year plan. So, but you know, 70%, 12 years, next three halvings, you're starting today, $5 million is, is rich. $2, $2 million, you're definitely comfortable, no question about that, but $5 million, I would say that it's a great plan to have in place. I think it's foundational, fundamental, that anyone beginning before anything else should have this plan in place. And then you could go ahead and leverage different investments. Why does it matter? If we are experiencing diminishing returns, then we wanna be following a roadmap, a guide that is giving us that clarity that we could position in and out if you're just buying Bitcoin and holding it for the next 10 years, you don't have to do anything, you could walk away. But if you're trying over those next two years while you already have that fundamental plan in place to acquire as much Bitcoin as you can and doing it in a very calculated risk averse way, then it really matters to understand these price movements. 150 days, that's a small time frame to be looking at and considering for this type of investment. The 2012 cycle, you can see here in 2013, peaking higher. This is 11X, an 11X, 7X. Are we gonna see something like a 9X, something in the average of the two? As we've seen up until this point, this cycle has been an average in volatility to the upside. It's been an average of the two cycles in volatility to the downside. And as far as consolidation and sideways so far up until this point, it's been an average of the two. Will the return also be a 9X? If I can get it, I want it all. I will take what the market gives me though. I mean, I think price says everything really, doesn't it? You know, and it's such a, it's such a significant price move. It comes off of a dip and then it moves so fast. It's not going to be something that you're going to miss. Yeah. No and it's having the, it, it, it's really sort of seeing that as early as possible. Yeah. That's why I think that's probably the, you know, the biggest event to happen. By the way, as we, as we begin following price action, I saw it this morning on the live show. I was, I was looking at this. I don't know if either of you saw it, but mm. I've spoke about the four step at the, at the top that happened during the both previous cycles. You could see it clearly here as well. That's also a sign, I believe, as we're in the blow off top, as we talked about, you know, some people like to exit afterwards on the way down. This for me is the signal over here, the price action that I, if this is occurring again, there's no question I, after the one, two, three, four, on four, I'm exiting. If we're seeing that unfold in real time, that's going to be a strong signal. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and on four is, is the exit what's going on everybody good morning happy thursday this is jordan with conquer trading and investing getting ready here for our last public live stream so happy to be a part of this with all to share this with all of you i hope you all are doing well i am obviously really 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 excited for today this is uh monumental for for myself and what we've have been doing here together. So um, let's get into it. You know, uh, I had a I had a little box up there reminding me so I didn't forget. It's probably there. It is right there. I look. Look. Someone remind me later. It's not that important, but you know. So rem remind me later before I get off. I want to talk about you know how I'm buying Bitcoin, how I'm dollar cost averaging, adding to that spot Bitcoin again here coming out of mid cycle. And I told you, it was what was it on Tuesday, the last public live stream? You know what? I, ca I can't see not borrowing money here. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend anyone else do that, by the way. Experts only. If you are borrowing against Bitcoin to buy more Bitcoin, or if you are using any type of margin and or leverage, then you best be an expert. What's an expert? If you're asking the question, you are most definitely not. There's an amazing strategy that was introduced at the beginning of this video. It's there on the public live stream so that anyone who's watching this jumping in for the first time. By the way, if you are new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. Uh, listen, 
we still will be. Is this really the last live stream? It has to be asked, right? It was asked. Am I ever going to do another? My wife is like, no, come on. You have to. You should do one weekly. You should do one monthly. Listen, at, I know this. At the, at the exit, at the cycle peak exit, we will be live with CTM only at the moment that's happening. I, I, I do know that I will let everyone know like very crystal clear that I that I got that I called the top and got out of the top. You know, that will that will be very clear that but aside from that, I have no idea when I will upload videos to the channel. If anything is important and in re and relevant, I'll make sure I'm gonna definitely do that for all of you. Maybe once a week. Otherwise, my focus and my time is on the on the on the CTM only live streams that we're gonna be doing Monday through Friday. So that's that's what that is. Um so yeah. Buying Bitcoin, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But when, again, when we talk about anything like advanced strategies, that's that's experts only. If you ever went to the top of Jackson Hole, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and you take the tram up before you get on the tram, there's a giant sign that takes up the whole wall with big letters. And it's like danger, experts only. You could die. And the same thing here in the markets. Uh, and if you're not yet an expert, Here's the thing. You got to start. You got to invest in yourself. You got to invest in your time. You found, or for whatever reason, the Google algorithm has bought you here. You found the place to do it. We continue to work hard, staying focused here on the most important trade that matters. That's Bitcoin right now. What's going on? We have a big deal, right? You saw over here, it says the sellers. This is their opportunity. How do I get rid of this? Give me one second over there. Boom. Sellers over here. This is a big deal. If you are bearish on Bitcoin, and there's still a lot of people that are very bearish on Bitcoin. There are people that were bearish on Bitcoin at $30,000. And those same people are still bearish on Bitcoin. Now, some of them said that, hey, listen, I, you know, after price came up, most important trend line in crypto, they've been talking about a, pr a, a, a price period, a price period. A price range between call it fifty thousand and fifty five thousand dollars, where Bitcoin could actually move up into it would be like kind of like a dead cat bounce of a, this is the anatomy of a bear market. By the way, I will be talking about the bear market a lot in the months ahead because there's going to be a bear market in Bitcoin, right? And if you're not prepared for it, it's going to crush you and it's going to crush you quickly. There's no question about that. Right. You cannot understand when the bear is beginning if you don't understand where the bull is peaking. They're both at the same exact moment. Uh, a lot of people think that in the, you know, in the anatomy of a bear market, you have a big downward off that top and then you have like a kick up. Right now, generally, it doesn't look anything like this because the down move happens a lot quicker. This was prolonged over a couple of months. So that doesn't look like a bear market. You know, and then the kick up too, that's 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 also violent. And then boom, it begins. That's like the confirmation the bear market's beginning, but you missed a big percentage of it if you didn't get it from the top. Uh, so some people are thinking that in this range, perhaps you could see a lot of resistance in this area around $57,000. So I'll be generous. I'll even say up to $57,000. And I'll say as low as $50,000 where we came in, there were some people expecting here where the where this this like impulse this buy impulse will end, and that the bears are going to be able to gain uh, control. So if that's you and you are bearish on Bitcoin, I mean this is your moment. This this is your moment to shine. You have by the way tomorrow out of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Speaking of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, that's where well virtually all the heads of the central banks will be meeting on <laughs> Friday. Could you imagine? What's what's wrong with that fresh mountain air that the free world has got them so shook they won't get together? But there they are. Um, so there's a there's a Four Seasons up there. What is that owned by the the Bin Ladens and the and the Bushes? There's a Four Seasons at the foot of the mountain, right next right near that tram, and that's where they all stay. And and uh and anyway, it that's that's a lot of danger to work out for. That could that could really play into the bearish case for Bitcoin over here if the Fed starts tapering. Of the Ted's, of the Fed's timeline is more hawkish than the market's ready for, and or they believe that the 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 Fed is going to taper sooner than they expect. You might see a prolonged sell-off over here. You might see this might be the bearish case for Bitcoin taking off, and where they're going to take out. Um, I don't want that. 
I want a paintbrush. They're going to take out the low, the mid-cycle low, and then they're going down $20,000 or it could even be lower. A lot, a lot of them talk about $20,000. And, you know, that I think I, I don't I don't mean to do it injustice. I hope that's pretty much probably a little bit more generous and uh, really crushing their case. Here's the trigger, though. It's the break of this trend line over here. I have to ask. We don't do this on the on the CTM only live streams. But since we are public and it is YouTube, could you go ahead and smash the like button here? Help celebrate what we've done here together. It's been almost two years. In the end of October, it'll be two years that we've been live here preparing people massively to take advantage of these macro trends, changing lives, continuing to do so, just getting better and better at it. All right. So anyway, what, here's, the, here's, the, here's the chance for the, for the sellers, right? You have the, the, the caution line. It was dotted yellow in bolded to let you know that the first wave right, is coming to an end if that line is taken out and that has occurred, right? Does that mean that we're going to draw down potentially 30%, you know, over the next week or so and challenge the most important trend line in crypto? I mean, it's a possibility. Just be prepared for it in case it happens, right? Is it possible that the buyers are going to show up here and tomorrow after Jerome outdubs the markets once again, if you are CTM strong and have invested your time, you understand and how to pick up and read on a lot of things, including ter- tone and well-worded, um, well, well-worded words. <laughs> Either which way, that's what's happening tomorrow. <laughs> I love you. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you all so much. Uh, but I have to be honest. I'm so much happier. I'm so much happier on CTM only. That's the truth. You know, Uh, and it's just a different environment. It's a much more educational uh, focused environment. Um, What are we looking at? What do we happen? Do I think we're going to see a 30 percent drawdown? No, I don't think so. It's, It's entirely possible, though. Be prepared around this time, by the way, four years ago. Now, Bitcoin was trading at an all time high and it had come up a little bit further uh, and it, it, it did come up 40 percent quickly. That's a massive shakeout. I think a lot of people, a lot of newer people who are not yet battle tested in Bitcoin, you're not battle tested until you survived a bull market. You're not battle tested until you survived a bear market. So if you're not holding Bitcoin four years or longer, you're just not battle tested yet. Now, many, many people in the bull market of 2021, they gained their sea legs. They, you know, they, they've gained their sea legs riding out the mid-cycle shakeout. They'll, you know, they are, they, are now, they are now Bitcoin tough. There's no question about that. And going in, by the way, just, just a couple of years ago, March 2020, when we had that liquidity crisis, when the central bankers broke the system, you saw what happened. You saw uh, Bitcoin get massively wrecked. And, and most of the people holding it, they kept holding it. Right. Could you imagine now coming out of the mid cycle dip? Now you have an extra an extra uh, platoon uh, uh, and a huge platoon at that of these like Bitcoiners who they're not selling. They're not we're not selling. All right. Anyway, if you are selling over here, though, I don't know. <laughs> or protecting yourself, hedging yourself, by the way, if, you know, if, if you were bearish on Bitcoin, like for, for real, if, if you were bearish on Bitcoin, the first exit that we looked at, the first entry over here put out on August 23rd, right, was when we had, is it August 20, August 23rd, when we have the, the first impulse, the sell impulse on the two hour. Trade still open and active. That right there, my friends, is how it's done. It was updated in real time and continued to be throughout. And if that, and if you were bearish on Bitcoin, I'm sure all the guys, that, all, all the all the all the people that have been bearish on Bitcoin, that they nailed that first sell impulse as well. Because if you if you weren't, then what were you doing? Ah, uh, a little bit of a mic drop over there. But what they're looking to do is to, if this is indeed, I don't know if this is the end of the first wave. By the way, and I say that only because, well, technically, we had a breakdown of that trend line. We'll see where it closes by the end of the day, too, by the way. It could close uh, b- above that trend line, and then it would just be a wick below. No big deal. Or if we're closing below and, uh, you know, tomorrow at a Jackson Hole, 
Powell does, you know, uh, outdub the markets and the markets realizes, wait a second, that they're not pulling away whatsoever. At that point, you might see a huge rally come out of Bitcoin. And then this that still might be that first wave. We have myself, my opinion, my view that of the rest of CTM, we'll be looking at it as it occurs, you know, tomorrow together and making sure that we all stay focused on where we are putting it all together in real time. So that's that's the opening right there of where we are today. By the way, if you're watching what's going on, and I'm sure some of you are, I'm, I'm sure some people are watching what's going on. I know a lot of CTM strong. How, man, it iron sharpens iron. It gets better and better. But uh, this was... This was on the last live stream we did on Tuesday, the last public live stream, I should say. And I get, we gave you the, the, the Cardano exit, right? Cardano trading above the trend line, put it out there, made it very clear for everyone. If you're, if you're in Cardano, you might want to take uh, some, some profit off the table on the cross of that trend line, you know, and then boom, extending down outwards. Here's the line now, if you're bullish on Cardano and you're waiting for that resumption, you are watching this line like a predator. What does that mean? What does a predator do when it lines up its prey? Does it just run at it? No. Does it watch it for a while and observe and wait to pick the most efficient point possible to have the greatest success of the kill? Yep, that's how it's done. So we're waiting and watching because you don't know if if Cardano is gonna take a, lot, a run at this resistance here and break it and then start rooming up, running up. Or if this is going to be under further pressure, come back down. Cardano, by the way, looking healthy above its eight hour line over here. Here we go. Here's its caution line. So Cardano actually is still looking very healthy. That's 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 a good thing if you're bullish over here on, on some alts. And Cardano is just one of many. Whatever, right? It's one of many. What about Ethereum? Ethereum broke down its line before Bitcoin. Right. But we have been seeing and tracking the dominance grow uh, Bitcoin versus Ethereum. Right. So, so Ethereum right now is a little bit weaker. Right. And, and, and this is, by the way, just consolidating in a bull market after that move is, is, in, is very bullish. But we had that breakdown ahead of time. Breakdown, retest, resuming off. Right. So what's next for Ethereum is we need to track the upside of when this possible impulse will end. And the first, uh, the first opportunity to go ahead and get long as we've broken out here mid-cycle, right? And there it is right there. That's what you want to be watching and tracking on Ethereum. We'll do it together. I don't know what happens. We've had a, a, big, te a big technical break here in, in the markets. It is up to now to the bears and the sellers to find out what they're going to do with it. I can't imagine much signal occurring ahead of tomorrow's uh, Jackson Hole event. It seems to me what happens, what is said there and the market reaction, that will be signal to me and I'll be paying much more attention. You could see technically ahead of everyone, we've been making sure at this pivotal time that we stay hyper-focused and laser-focused and on the right side across it all. So that's what we're gonna keep doing over here uh, together, you know? Um, What's next? Well, where do we get started, should I say? Right? The Alan pointing to 117, the new having tracker, Alan Al, 117 days to the projected cycle peak. Right? That puts us as a peak at around, I think, December 21st. Is it going to be a really, let's say, a Bitcoin Christmas? I mean, excuse me. Obviously, Christmas has nothing to do with Bitcoin. I'm not talking about the, the birth of the Lord here. I'm talking about just the, the, the holiday period of Christmas, the week when the family's together. That is it going to be a joyful Bitcoin uh, celebration or is it going to be a little like this? Do you remember, you ever see the big short when Brad Pitt starts unloading the, 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 the short? Watch this for a second with me. I hardly got cell phone or Wi-Fi service. I'm trying to sell $200 million worth of securities in a pub. It smells like sheep. That that's gonna I think that's gonna be us on, on this Christmas this Christmas year. We're gonna be like, could you imagine? It's not gonna be easy at all getting out at the top, right? Here's here, getting out at the top is gonna take some 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 highly uh let I don't some 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 high level elite expertise, 
That's that's what it takes to do that. It's all I spend my time is looking and preparing for what's happening in this in this 117 day window. We're getting down to it. It's if you're not prepared now, you're not going to be prepared at the top. There's no question about that. And most people, because of the last cycle, super cycle, they're not even going to be ready and or expecting a top. They're going to be living that euphoric mania. And I'm telling you right now, there's going to be a top. After the top, there's going to be a massive bear market. Price is going to draw down 85% for the top. That's if you're in Bitcoin. If you're in an altcoin, it could be over 95%. It's absolutely brutal. And there will be many people who will hold through all of that and four years later be out on top way ahead in their investment. That's that's my opinion, you know? Um, and I'm watching it from all different angles at all times, preparing myself. This is interesting, by the way. This is the stock markets looking at the fastest bull market to double off the lows. That's March 2020, March 24th, March 20th, 2020, up until today, 100% return and look how it's getting quicker. Is that perhaps some type of trend? When is March, this is 2009. I'm looking for when the longer ones were or, or up front, yellow one was 2020, right? 1990, that would took a long time. But now we're here, it's 40 years later. No, it's 30 years, Jordan. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out in this, like people are always like, it's not different this time. Well, what is different this time is that the Fed and the government, they just don't care and they just continue to go full throttle here. The stimulus keeps needing to get bigger and bigger. The expansion of the QE purchases continues to, we just had $1.4 trillion of QE purchases. The Fed is buying and monetizing the debt. It's what it's happening in real time before all of us. Is this time different? I don't know. I remember what happened in Venezuela. I remember as the economy fell apart, it was one of the most wealthiest nations in the world and Latin America. And then now today, you've seen what happened. But the stock market, they went up to like dizzying heights. Why? Because it was it's priced in the fiat, right? It's not that the stocks are gaining value as is the fiat is losing that purchasing power. Do I think the dollar is going to be here next year as the world reserve currency? I do right? Anything's possible. Who knows? I, I happen to think unless the, the the powers that be inside the U.S., inside the Federal Reserve, uh, the, 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 private, the private shareholders of the Federal Reserve, if they decide at any point in time that they want to sacrifice the, the, Federal, the Bank of New York, the U.S. dollar and the Federal Reserve, then they will do that in favor of something like the IMF and uh, the SDRs, you know? Back, you know, the central bank digital currency. It's what started this all in 2018. It's what I was tracking as the IMF was putting out white papers on central bank digital currencies. We've been watching it all unfold in real time and continue to do so. I don't foresee that happening. I think that the dollar is going to continue to be a beast and take up the majority of the world trade. You know, it, now that could change all of a sudden. You know, everyone could be like, listen. <laughs> you guys couldn't you guys couldn't hold down Afghanistan forget that you know we're selling we're selling uh we're selling oil and bitcoin boom game over game over if that ever happens by the way is that going to is that going to be the first step no they're going to take euros you know and that started to happen you're seeing oil being traded it more so in euros with Russia you're seeing China trading it for yuan it's changing and slowly eroding the amount of trade taking place in dollars. But this whole system, this whole Ponzi scheme is so heavily uh, indebted because it's a debt-based system, fractional reserve. You, by creating debt is how you create the money, right? Uh, because of that, there's always a place for the dollar because everyone has to repay these dollars. So all these other in, in, in debtors, there, there's so... There's a, there's a need for dollars. The dollar is going to continue, in my opinion, to uh, to to play a, a significant is the king dollar. Bitcoin's not taking over the dollar anytime soon, in my opinion. Let's look at the tiny market of gold first. That ten trillion dollar market. That's the next step. Four years from now, um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about, but I know what I'm focused on. 
right? And I know when I'm focused on that double wave into that cycle peak and lift off. And you know, over here with so many different ways, Ted really just, just highlighting what we're looking at over here with the metal model, right? And it's beautiful. Now he's taking a step further, right? And he's like, he's, I know it's not ready for, for, for the public because most people don't see it. Yeah, but this is all like you're looking at right now or all that we are looking at. And by the way, if we do have, you know, some type of retrace down towards 42,000, $40,000, I mean, that's still with that. That's that's well within the model. And it's not to say that price can't trade to the upside or downside of, of this this projected range at any time. Of course, it can. We're just tracking price. But you can see that very well. If you if you have eyes to see, you don't need this. You're looking at this. But you need this first to understand and to get to to where we are here today and continue to move forward. The rational root. Who remembers when we had the root on on the podcast? <laughs> Pretty good. How are you? Good. Good to be here with you. And, the, and if you haven't seen this video, you got to find it. It's comparing bull markets, data modeling analysis. I have to get the root into that title. Uh, I'll leave that up there so I could do that afterwards. And the root is checking back. Look at this. This is kind of interesting. We've talked about this here often in CTM. We talked about the angle into the correction, right? And then the angle out of the correction, especially we did that a lot in March and April on Bitcoin. Here you could see the rational root picking up that same thing over here. And he's saying because of this angle, you know, uh, but you know, this this if we have an 18% drawdown, that should take us into what probably is the mean, right? That doesn't mean price can't drop below it a little bit. You show that we this is why we get accurate on the TA. You can't stop the TA, right? And you know, that's why we 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 have the the lines we look because we could get as accurate as possible. Uh, this model is very interesting and it's a good vantage point to look at it because he's saying, like you can see here, it goes above and below. What he's saying is around 41K and anything uh, in that area, that's well within range at this particular point and we should continue moving up. There is one thing though, this is lining cycles up from the all, when they make the previous cycle all time high. The past two cycles, they peaked about 300 days right after that occurred. I, if that were to occur this time, that's Bitcoin peaking and when? That must be somewhere around the end of September. You know, hey, anything's possible. Just be aware and watch everything. You know, I, that's that's not obviously how we, uh, and, and, I, and I wish Root, because he, I wish Root, by the way, could line up block since having, do, do block since mid-cycle low. That would be awesome. This is also, I've often talked about how we look at and we're monitoring the four-year cycle, but it's every 210,000 blocks. Ian has said, listen, it's not really going to matter. Uh, it's not a significant difference between days and blocks, but it's nice looking at the blocks and seeing that between the last cycle four years ago, today, uh, you know, off the 2017 bull market and where we are today, blocks since the last halving, we're actually showing the same trajectory once again. You know, and don't forget off the mid cycle low, that was a 7x into that cycle peak. You know, are we going to see a 7x again? It's how I start off this video and on purpose so that everyone is as focused as possible at this particular time on what matters most and how many were. I, I like when I say that, what I'm, what I'm talking about is the video that we did here one week ago. As Bitcoin was breaking, or I mean, I'm sorry, as Bitcoin was. This was the recap of it. Hold on one second. One week, ago, one week ago, I posted the recap. So it was days earlier. Let's find it right here, right? When did I go ahead and initiate that trade with everyone live on the 50 to one? I'm not sure. It's over here somewhere. It's right before Bitcoin broke the most important trend line in crypto. You all remember it. And I, but here's the review of it. Price. And I'm just gonna jump over to real time. As we were talking, here it is in real time, lining up as price gets rejected by the most important trend line in crypto, and then lining up the trade with the risk of reward. It was uh, a one to 50, just coming into about $90,000 on Bitcoin, right? This is when, this is when, now many of you paid attention off the descending wedge. I know that many of you got leveraged over here, experts only, uh, you know, positioning the trades out of here experts only, right? 
for everyone, making sure before the most important trend line was even broken, lining up the opportunity and trade when there's the least amount of risk into the market, right? So now you have a lot of people, the, like the, the, a lot of people that were looking for that Wyckoff accumulation and they kind of like, it got, it, they missed it. It got away from them too quickly, right? And they're like, ah, oh, you know, I, I knew, I, 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 I called the distribution after it happened and then I was looking for the, accum anyway, I don't know why, why we're talking about that, but that's what we're talking about right now. The last public live stream, big shout out to Plan B and all the work that he's contributed to Bitcoin and the community. He had so much. If you're not following Plan B on Twitter, make sure that you do. Go Start going through his media and, you know, like this. Boom. Go start here and just flip through the charts, you know, and go through. He adds a, a tremendous amount of value and insight to about what we're doing here with Bitcoin. By the way, not just Plan B, big shout out to Charts BTC, being that this is the last public live stream. Charts BTC, same thing. Jump over to his chart, to his media, and go ahead and, and just spend time looking at the, all these charts, right? You gotta stay focused. You gotta stay focused and you gotta look at it from multiple vantage points, from multiple layers all the time without wavering in your own belief and or view that you've spent how many hours you can't could you could is it counted in days how how much time have you spent researching what you believe and deem to be the most important trade that matters i mean i've i have presented that well here on youtube for all of you right uh, showing to you uh the time dedication that i put into this right legendary things epic life-changing things they don't happen unless you put the time and the work in you know and that's that so what else are we looking at we'll look at this tomorrow this is beautiful this is ian's work over here and ian showing us uh lining up 2016 bitcoin and in in orange and then in green the 2016 ethereum cycle coming off the mid cycle uh low and you could see so far to date the symmetry of how these are lining up Wave one into wave two into that liftoff. We're going to be tracking Ethereum tightly into the close here, right? First half was Ethereum outperforms. Then from the mid cycle into the cycle peak. Well, that's not what happened last time. Ethereum didn't outperform Bitcoin actually until that last, you know, three week window, that last 30 day window. Then, it, then Ethereum had a huge move. But up until that point, Bitcoin was was definitely dominating. Is that type of behavior going to be playing out again? Uh, it's important for setting up a potential nice trade uh, for that blow off of all season. If you haven't seen the video on the CTM recommended playlist, make sure you do that. They're all essential. All the work that we did months ago was preparing for what's going to unfold over the next 120 days. That's all the work that we did, all that time we put in, all that focus, all that game playing it out was to prepare for what's, it's game time. Are you ready? Because it's game time, you know? Many are called, few are chosen. Here we are. So I think, I think we have to play for sure some head snack in this particular moment here as we're looking at the last live stream. Big shout out to head snack for sharing his uh, time and talent with us, putting together the Conquering Trade. Boom. Analyzing the charts, hitting projected targets within the margin. Find the flow, sip the matcha, and wait for the waves to come in with lobsters. The kind hearted Jordan Fosters, working smarter, not harder to move the markers. On his way to conquer, trading and investing, drinking the coffee while reflecting on the blessing. The markets are not crashing, the prices might be slashing. Just to pretend they're in fashion, take the like button, comments, and smash it. Boom, boom, Jordan in the room, grab the bull by the horns, and we'll the moon. Flow from the plateau, make the play. Boom, boom, it's a taco day. <laughs> you know, you could you could only take what the market gives you. I mean, that's the that's the truth of it. We've been very lucky and blessed in these past two years what we've done together because of what has happened in the markets, right? You don't get to like you don't get to do and accomplish what we've done together 
you know, without having that, that crash. CTM over here, you know, was riding this strong, riding this strong, uh, not, not the S&P 500, the markets, and specifically focused in the currency markets, uh, focused on metals, and setting up that Bitcoin trade as all of a sudden, but watching the macro the whole time. And as we saw in the end of January, what was taking place over in Asia, and we started tracking it, there were a few people early as us. One of them was the Macro Voices podcast. Uh, and Eric was Eric Townsend, he was also with us watching what was unfolding, preparing for it. And then there was like Matt Matheson. I believe he was the first video I saw on the virus. Uh, things that people that were early have said from the beginning is what continued to be correct. If you all even remember, by the way, we positioned ourselves beautifully in FX on risk, uh, on risk, risk, risk on currencies. I looked at FX this morning, by the way, as Bitcoin was off. It's basically unchanged across the board. It's not even moving. It's not, I'm not seeing any type of concerns in the market at all. What I'm just looking at on Bitcoin taking place is that nice technical breakdown. Sellers have the opportunity to do something about it. And the buyers have the opportunity to show at this particular point what they're made of. And speaking of, I told you that I'll be buying Bitcoin. I'll be setting that up. I'll wait for the break of the, of the trend line I showed you for that correction. Because I don't know if this sell impulse, if this correction is going to be uh, lasting you know, a couple of weeks or, or, or uh, you know, the degree that it'll go down if it's going to see a 15% drawdown or a 30% drawdown or more. So I'm just going to track it out of the line into the repair. I'll be doing that with you all. We really positioned hard into the Japanese yen and Swiss franc, did it against commodity currencies. And right away, I let everyone know you're no longer looking for swing traders. These are now position trades. Hold them and push them. We were able at the bottom to a little prematurely, a little prematurely exiting the positions, not at the bottom, but making sure here and crushing the S&P the whole way, making sure here to get out at the bottom. We didn't know on the way up whether or not we were going to come back in for a retest or not. By May, it was clear that it's only up from here. There is no buying. There's no selling any equities. Stocks go up. We're following the liquidity of the central banks and it's abundant. It was at that particular point, it was it was actually in April. You could go ahead and watch the video. And I said to you, S&P 500, 4,100, you know, boom. People didn't believe it when they heard it at the time. There's no question about that. It wasn't just the S&P 500, right? We got to do it also on oil. We were the ones when oil was trading, uh, $56, $64, looking at that top over there and talking about what we expected to take place with the slowdown uh, of the economy and then put out a 2450 uh, uh, oil price target. That's when it was trading up before the crisis, right? Up around $60 a barrel. That came rather quickly and unexpected. So at that point, we talked about, you know what? We have to rate, lower that down towards $14. That once that was hit, it was over. Price went down all the way down to zero. Uh, the only regret, regret I have <laughs> is that we didn't get it on the way up. That's that's the only regret. I mean, I understand that I I said to everyone, listen, I don't. What just happened? A huge black swan anomaly. Oil trading the June forward contract 2020 for four, negative forty seven dollars a barrel of oil. I was like, we just crushed it to the downside. I'm staying out. And and it's that type of let's say, experience that really pays off in the markets of knowing, hey, listen, it's not the moment to be to be invested. It's not the moment to be speculating. Right now is the moment to make sure that I, that I am cautious, especially after abnormally large gains. Now, if you, by the way, were taking profits, are taking profits at Bitcoin in December and you're having some abnormally large gains, a lot of people often feel that they could take bigger risks. This is the worst thing that you can do. If you don't have the guidance and you don't have the experience, you're going to learn the hard way. By working together and closely together, it's going to give you the greatest edge that you could have in the markets. There's no question about it. As we, as we, If you are setting up your planned trade, how you're protecting yourself, 
different strategies that you're getting ready to deploy to pre- at the, before the cycle top is in, you're going to be ahead of the game. You're going to get the Bitcoin entry if you were sell, if you were bearish on Bitcoin that we looked at, you know, over here, uh, you know, just just on the 23rd of August, rather than selling it down over here today. Uh, anyway, Woo. <laughs> James, it's a it's a great honor. It's a great honor. I'm going to play some honeymoon here just so I can take a breath and see what's going on with y'all. By the way, James, I had that bookmark from the first time you put it. <laughs> I don't need to keep spamming the channel. Uh, listen, no, no one's look anyway. Jay Powell, we, we did, tell me we didn't crush it in June. The June meeting, FOMC, and you heard it here first. Alan Al, I know that you can give that a thumbs up. You remember it? I was like, Powell's gonna outdub the markets. Boom, base is what happened. Are we looking at that again? Right? Listen. Right now, Powell's in a hard place. He's he's running for uh, I, I want to say election renomination. Right, Biden and team look like they're going to be getting rid of him. Why? I don't know. I think Jay has some 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 heart in him. He's lo- he's looking uh, to do what he think is the best that he could do in his position. I don't think that he's really uh, so much on board with different different type of world agendas that that are taking place. And, uh, you know, we'll see what he does tomorrow. But rather than rather than speculating, what I do is I wait to see what's introduced to the markets and then the market's reaction. That's signal. That's what we've learned. That's what has been taught here in CTM. It is the most effective way to go about it. So uh, that's what we'll be doing. We'll do it together tomorrow. I, I can't thank you all enough. So I'm not, this is zero goodbye. There's no question about that. It's our last, last live stream. And it's a beautiful thing. But does that mean that we will never live stream again? 
Nope. Uh, does that mean that we're going to be live streaming every day together, CTM only? 100%. We're doing it every day. And it's going to just be that much better. And that's the truth of it. We've been doing it now for two weeks, every other day. It's a better experience for myself, for everyone involved. And that's where we need to be right now as we work and, and continue to bring it home, right? 117 days, we have to be sharper than ever. Who knows what's going to happen? Tomorrow is, you know, a possible wild card. We want to be paying attention, right? We saw the technical break that occurred over here. We want to be paying attention. We know where this is green lighted again, right? We're paying attention. We, we've seen that across the board. If you're watching Cardano, you got the script. You know where to attack. You know where to put, if you took one third off, you know where to put probably not only that third back on, but hey, maybe a little bit more. That's a bullish outcome. Uh, you got to know how to manage your risk. If you don't know how to manage your risk, we, you have the CTM course. You have all of the CTM videos explaining the CTM principles, the strategy in action, all the videos that are on this channel, and there's a lot of them now, it's almost two years, they're, I mean, each and every day is showing up, putting in the work. If you, wanna, if you want that type of education, then there it is. That's where you gotta invest yourself. Thanks to everyone, you know. Uh, tomorrow I'll see you all. It will be CTM only, and it'll be CTM only from now on. That's all good in the hood. Uh, we will do, I will do, probably I will commit to, probably I will commit to at least one, one video a week uploaded to the public. And uh, we'll see what those look like, highlights throughout the week of things that I feel that everyone would enjoy. I want it to be a video where if you're sitting down with a cup of coffee on a Saturday, you're really going to dig in and you're really going to enjoy and we'll be able to share uh, the love with everyone. So, everyone, thank you so much uh, for what we're doing here. Ricardo, uh, looking for information. There's a link below in the description. It's very... In the description, it says my training program. It includes uh, the Discord. In the Discord, you'll find the announcements channels. Every time I'm posting a CTM only video, you'll find it up there, uh, as well as the CTM recommended playlist. And everything, everything is found from there. All right, everyone. Andy, big shout out to to big shout. The biggest shout out to the the silent majority. You know, uh, again, dedicated all of this to the silent majority. There's, there's been a tremendous amount of lives that, that have been touched. And I know that we are going to go on together to touch a lot more, right? The, 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 the more effective and efficient that we can be in taking care of uh, the goals that we've set out to accomplish, the more and more that other people could do the same. So, all right. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone, uh, you know, and uh, the, there's not much else to say. Except I'll see you all on the inside. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Okay, I'm going to play the vocals, actually. Thank you, Simon.
Dave, you know, that's what I was looking for before when I pulled up the S&P 500 and I, and I was trying to show uh, the, some of the stuff that we did over here. And, you know, it was it was very early. It was sometime in April when I first uh, mentioned to all of you on CTM some of the ramifications about the things that were taking place, about the lockdowns, about uh, the direct payments. And I talked about what the... Uh, the purpose of this all was, and of course we know much more now. We know much more now. We shared recently the video, it's worth watching, on the monetary reset on Tales from the Crypt. If you missed that video, go to your podcasts, go to Tales from the Crypt, and look for one of the most recent, uh, po- one of the, the last 10 podcasts. It's called Monetary Reset. You have listen to it multiple times, right? There's information there that you should take with you to help uh, refine your own thoughts on this subject. Uh, back here in April 2020, we were talking about, you know, the, the the agenda and what was taken. A lot of people at that point weren't ready for that type of information. There's no question. For a lot of people at that point, that was just way too, let's call it sharp or, or uh, intense for them. But I do remember then, you know, not too there at, in September 2020, Around that time, a lot of people then commenting, you know what, Jordan, we do, I just wasn't ready for it at the time. I, I just wasn't ready for it. Now I see what you're talking. Thank you for just putting that out there. And it was a public forum, so I couldn't really do that too often, you know. Uh, but I know that a lot of you are, are informed and educated. Bitcoin just takes you even further. It's why it's the orange pill. You can't get to the orange pill, the pill of all pills, until you've been red-pilled. And a lot of people need to be red pilled in a lot of different ways. We've done it here by opening up one of the most important red pills, the financial system, the monetary system that we are within, right? The central bank, fractional reserve, debt-based monetary system and the evil of it and uh, you know how it enslaves us and the people and what we can do to protect ourselves, not only ourselves, but if you if if you go further enough, it's not about yourself anymore. It's about your children's children, right? We're just getting started over here. I imagine over the next, I can't imagine what's going to take place over the next ten years. You know, uh, speaking of Plan B earlier, if you're looking and watching, one of the things that he presented it was, uh, I don't have it up right now. He was he was talking about uh, the fourth turning things that are taking place right now. I have the audiobook. I, I haven't had the opportunity yet to listen to it. One day, I would love the opportunity to listen to it. Uh, and under, But from afar, I understand it. That's the period we're in right now. We're into the crisis portion of it. Uh, interesting stuff. We're going to be here navigating it together. You know, Greg pointing out, pay attention to what happens with Russia and the Saudis. I, I, I imagine, could you imagine that all of a sudden... Could, I mean, this is not going to happen, but could you imagine they decided they were going to, the Saudis were going to only sell oil in Bitcoin? <laughs> what, what would the U.S. do? Does the U.S. have to go attack the Saudis? And then like, the, you know, the Saudis are like, are you kidding? You just got kicked out of Afghanistan. What are you doing here? You know, it's, it's embarrassing, don't you think? Um Worse than embarrassing. I, I'm sure that people from afar have been following what's going on. I'm sure that you've been moved to pray for those. There are people in an absolutely horrific situation right now that could be left, abandoned, stranded in a country ruled by uh, people that are looking to kill them. This is horrific. You know, there's real suffering out there. Uh, I'm sure many of you have been through many life experiences and understand what that means. What, what love means, what sacrifices means. Uh, all, all we're trying to do here, right? We're at, at the end of the day, we're just trying to not only become better people, better humans, but do our best at protecting ourselves and those around us. Uh, because th- there's a fight out there. There's a fight between good and evil, you know? And it matters what side you're on. So I, I pray by grace that we're all able to do whatever we could do to play our small role, right? and the instruments of, of his peace. So everyone, may God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy, for getting that up there, right? With laser laser hodl. It's so good. I'm going to listen to it again. <laughs> All right, everyone. So 
I, 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 of course, I'll miss the, the live streams with you all. Uh, I have to, te I get excited for the CTM only sessions. You know, I'm not always excited for the live streams to be out there public. There's a lot, you know, you have to be careful about what you say, how you say, how it's presented. You're dealing with people with all different types of, of levels and awareness and history and experience. And uh, yeah, so everyone understands why. All right, everyone. I'll talk to you soon.